I know, but this is old camel. And this is not a spring chicken. We're, today we're going to talk about something that's really hitting, shall we call it the Twitterverse, it's hitting all over the internet because this is something, well, is it racist? It's Paula Dean. come on! I know. Is it, is it because of what Paula Dean said or is it because of her it's, southern cooking? It's because of her, it's what she does for a living. She's on the, the non-approved list. Okay, you want to see how uh, much this country is changing, go look at what's being offered in fast food restaurants now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can... I, I didn't uh, go to a fast food restaurant to eat a salad. I don't. Although McDonald's does have a good chicken salad, but I don't eat it that often Ooh. because you might as well get a hamburger. It lasts with you longer. Actually, here's a good mm -hmm. one. When Carl Jr. used to offer salad bars, yeah, my, yeah. my family would go into Carl Jr.'s and my mother would make certain that all of us had a... a you know, the little salad that went with the meal, and we go buy and get the stuff. I forgot they used to have well, a salad bar. That we, was good. We get hamburger, french fries, a uh, drink, and a salad. Mm -hmm. All for the same thing, because it was like an unlimited salad bar. You just keep going mm -hmm. back. And my mother loved that, but they took the salad bar out. And, um, you know, but the, the, they want you, the president has basically said that they don't approve of that type of cooking. And when you don't approve of that type of cooking and you work for a company that is known to to be on the president's side, guess what happens with your show? Mm -hmm. It goes bye-bye. And, uh, you know, so... I think they're just using the, the other part as an excuse. Oh, yeah. Because, because actually we've got two issues right here. One is racism. Yeah. The other is uh, the uh, government influencing your ability for food selection. Yeah. They want you to eat healthy. No matter, okay, the, the restaurants are not, the stuff, the healthy stuff does not sell in the restaurants. People don't want it. Because first of all, uh, here's a problem. When they, they have to pre-make the healthy stuff, the non-healthy mm -hmm. stuff can be done quickly. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that they have, okay, my mother was in the restaurant business. My mother knew that if you made over X amount of salad or something, up front, you'd have to throw most of it away yeah. because it mm -hmm. deteriorates rapidly in the air. So they're basically prepackaging stuff in containers and that stuff has to be thrown out. I mean, the wastage in restaurants on healthy food it's is... a lot it, more, isn't yeah, it? That's why it costs you more to buy healthy food than it does unhealthy. And, and um, so it's a form of censorship. I mean, she ran, her family was in the grocery business and she can taste, you know, <laughs> and tell you the simple facts too, is that... Um, the grocery industry is starting to change because they're starting to remove stuff that is not on the approved list of our government and putting in stuff that is on the approved list. There's more organically grown stuff that nobody will buy because well, it costs too much. Here's one of the things is we noticed this last year was that, and I don't know if they're still doing this because we started talking about the price for whole milk was yeah. more expensive than low fat or non fat. Yeah. In fact, it, it went down in price. If you got non fat milk, that was the cheapest. Yep. Right? And it's, still, and it's like, this is crazy. Because I, I know. Because they were always the same price before. Uh, good bread, a good bread, according to the government, is cheaper than bad bread. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Uh, and the bread that people like is more expensive than the bread that's healthy for them. I mean, uh, Healthy, healthy, mac, healthy wheat mac or pasta is less expensive than the other pasta. Well, I guess this is changes from what it used to be because before the healthy food was really expensive and tasted horrible. Mm. Now it's tasting better. Doesn't mean it's always better, but now it's oh. getting to be less expensive. Not that it's less expensive to produce, but because you jacked up the price on the other ones. Okay, here's the trick: is we've been to the natural product Products, food, yeah. Product expo. And they actually have a lot of really good tasting stuff there now. But if you look at it, they're adding stuff to it to make it taste good. The stuff, the real, the, uh, and that is more expensive now than the uh, stuff that doesn't have stuff added to it. So basically it's self-defeating. In order to get people to eat the stuff, you have to put ingredients into it that make you think that you're getting something that you're not. Mm -hmm. And we actually got some stuff that... We have some stuff in the other room that basically, it, it, it grows on you, but not really that good, but after a while you... Which ones? Our, 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 our frosted, salty puff cakes. Or you know, I are. don't think they're that bad. You think they're horrible and grows on you. I think they're Well, no, they're I, can okay. I can taste the salt in the things. They're really... I didn't know you're supposed to have rice 
tough thing you're supposed to have salt in it like that. I didn't know that either. I think it's just that it's like a sweet and salty. Uh, yeah, but that's not really healthy for you. But uh, but um, but. I know <laughs> it counteracts the rice cake. <laughs> yeah, we're living in a. I heard last night. This is a good one. That um, basically um, they had a minority woman talking on a game on a show about the censorship of Paula Dean. She said, she said that basically the woman is 66 years old and she is a southerner. He said, when she was young, they called people the N-word on a daily basis, folks. But that's just like what life is. They also said they don't do that anymore. Yeah. But they did. But they then. were talking about what happened before. Oh, they were talking about, about it and basically it was on the, you know, but, um, but what happened was uh, a transcript that's supposed to be protected by law was released by someone that's, you know, okay, here's the trick is, if you don't want something to be released on you, don't go through anything that is ran by our president. <laughs> the Labor Department is ran by the president, so you can expect anything that you say in private is going to end up on somebody's desk somewhere. Yeah, well, you know, and people are still, still struggling with the fact that what they see on Facebook can't appear on the internet. Oh, yeah. Even if you check off that box that says you don't want it. Well, publicly. because here's the problem is, um, okay, say we we put up a picture, okay, we have, um, okay, flat out, we have a relative of hers that was a model, was it, 33 years ago? Mm -hmm. And her picture, she hasn't done it in a decade, but those pictures she did 33 years ago are all over the internet. And she's a businesswoman now, so. <laughs> so, and there's nothing you can do. You can't take them off. Uh, and then people manipulate things. I mean, okay, we have another character. She has a, okay, mm -hmm. we, we have a, another, we have a, a bikini czar, basically who they doctor the photos up on all the time to make them look like there's something or not. And we haven't, we have, but there's nothing you can do because once you put anything up, it's almost free license to do anything they want to with even, the pictures. Even if it's copyrighted, yep. um, people will take remove the copyrights. That's why you don't like um oh, it's easy why to are they, they put they put a big banner across the image. But I mean, news organizations are considering if you put something up on Twitter, it's considered public domain. Yep. Because it was out on a public service. And you cannot, uh, if it's up once, it's up forever because it's uh, it's just like they say this, this, what is it, this Vine service that only allows you to send like a 15 second video or something. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is if in that 15 seconds one person uh, captures it, which all you got to do, hey, folks, you call it right clicking on your computer. Mm -hmm. And you might also go right click. And, right click, save. Yeah, yeah, unless you basically, I think on Adobe, you can basically fix it so disable right clicking. But it, here's the problem is, if you disable right clicking and you have video programs like we have, you push a certain button and it's captured. You just capture it anyway. It doesn't make any difference. So, it, so once you've sent it out, um, well, like they said, well, I didn't realize that, that naked video of me fooling around with the horse was ever going to get seen by anybody but the person I sent it to. Yeah. What, well, they even have that new service, what is it, Snap for Chat, that after you send something to somebody, they open it up and then it self-destructs in 15 seconds. Yeah, but it doesn't self-destruct because you can capture it. Because they have a server. Yeah, it's, it's there, you can capture anything. I do know that some actresses, for instance, only took their clothes off in one movie 30 years ago, and you'd think that because what they've done, they've taken, they've, uh, taken all of the stills that were available that they you know there's this, 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 and then they've just changed the hair color and you know, everything is what you can do with manipulation. I mean, we, we finally, bro finally broke down and got Adobe Photo with that great big one, which means we can do virtually anything we want, including remove the copy. We Don't just have to it. figure out how to do it all. It's all there, you just have to. I don't read instructions, I just play with the stuff. But, um, uh, that you, if, it, it, all I can do is, um, I, I go back because I remember when I, I, I actually met Orson Welles, he was actually a relatively young man and, and talking about the stuff at a college lecture when he was telling the people, he said there's only one person in the world responsible for what you do and it's you. Mm -hmm. He said if you don't want people to see it or hear it, then don't ever do it. And he said, so don't come back to me in 40 years and say, well, I didn't know because he said, I told you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make it, everybody does what they're told not to. I mean, if you put something on Facebook, 
or Twitter or you put a picture up, it's always going to be there somewhere. Just know that once you put it out, that it's going to be out there. Yeah. And, and don't know, be surprised. If you're a smart person, we know people that are absolute geniuses at making certain that they um, are getting covered because they'll put embarrassing pictures of themselves out there so that they know everyone will pick it up mm -hmm. because it's called publicity. Well, and a lot of these leaks that come out is the people are basically, you know, selling their stories. Oh, yeah. Well, and, you know, and people think, oh, my gosh, the paparazzi. You know, there's services where the actors and actresses so join the services so it looks like shots are taken of them that the paparazzi is following them. Yeah. They do that. Or the celebrities themselves will call up the paparazzi and say, I'm going to be such and such yep. place at such and such. And I know because I've gotten the phone calls from friends that are publicists that say, I'm like, I don't know. It's like, we don't really do stuff like yeah. that. And we're nowhere near, you know, it's like, I'm not going to, I can't run down there, you know, an hour away. Yeah. To, you know. Why do you think so many celebrities have Foursquare? Because they want people to know where they're at. Well, they do, because even like we've been at concerts, right? Who was, who was supposed to, was it P. Diddy? And P. Diddy's like, oh, look, I'm getting ready for the concert to start. I'm on the way. Because they'll tell us updates on the red carpet. They'll say, P. Diddy's on the way. And you're like, how do you know that? It said it on his Twitter feed. Yeah. <laughs> we were at an event a couple And of, they use that to help generate excitement. Yeah, but we were at an event a couple of days ago, and there were some, some nice young French ladies there, you know, sisters, and they're basically, you know, speaking in French, talking about, okay, Tell people that we're at this. Tell people that we're at this event, but tell them they're not supposed to let anybody know we're here. <laughs> Which means they want everybody to know they're there. That's what happens. You know, actresses want publicity, but um, we're, it, we're, the two of us were in a weird situation. We both are registered news directors. Both are journalists, and we both um, okay. It, basically, according to Eric Holder, if you're a minority, you can't be charged with a hate crime because only white people can be charged with hate crimes. Isn't and right? I do look Asian. I look Asian. I I don't look like I'm an Indian, but the and Eternal, I, mean, I do an Asian. Yeah. But the American, the Internal Revenue Service refers to me as an American Indian, and so does the so does the Census Department, so does the military. I didn't realize that I could have got a little. I don't have a decoration that says American Indian on it, which I. I didn't get that one. I didn't know it existed, but it would have been a nice little thing on my chest. But um, um, my mother was an Indian. A grandmother's on both sides of my family. Rutherford B. Hayes' wife, who was an Indian, is one of my great grandmothers. I okay, I, we played a zillion times. My family, when they came over from Europe, had this weird idea that the most exotic women they ever saw in their lives was an American Indian. And it also because they could go back to their castles and stuff and embarrass everybody else in the family. Well, because they were very unusual compared to. Oh yeah. They were ex they were exotic looking. Compared well, they'd to never seen Chinese. Their yeah. idea of or the, Indians. Or Indians. Their idea of the world was the American Indian. That was exotic because they I mean, they never been to Persia. They're European. They're, been, they're European. They never been east. But they all oh, actually never been west. They never so they went east. You know, so um, that's why it worked. I mean, I got so many Indians in my family. You know, I, and Indians don't go howl. They don't go kimasabi either. They speak. I like say the chow. Yeah. <laughs> chow both. Yeah, but um, uh, my aunt, my family was always very educated. So I mean, the women learned to read and write, which was very unusual because it just was what attracted my the males of my family, the women, because they were all smart. They were, they were well, you can, you know, that's what my name looks like. They were not very bright soldiers or, mil or, or, or aristocrats, folks. They, they had other people do it. You mean that is how my name is written? Are you serious? Oh, God. I had so oh many dumbbells in my family. It's unreal. So, but um, you're being censorship hits you in a lot of ways because if they want to censor you, they say you're a racist. Mm -hmm. If they want to censor you, they sell the, they say the product that you're selling, your merchandising is not healthy. If they want to censor you, they basically... They slap on digital rights management. And digital rights management. I mean, I know a prominent musician that has simply got tired after... I mean, he's just been fighting it, you know. He own, he writes his own music, he plays his own music, he owns a, he owns a publishing house, and every time he does anything, he gets slapped with a digital rights management thing 
because in, they're doing it in the behalf of the of the rights holder of the music, and he is the rights holder of the music. I do it all the time. We have, by now most people know we I write our all the music that we do, folks, and um, we've been hit so many times with people where you just where where you know you're going to have to you know get your lawyers and go to such and such. Because you've been slapped with the D. I, I tell them I wrote the music. It's my music. The only there's only an instrument. On a, there's a piano, folks, or drums. They'll well, we're doing it in behalf, and you will have to discuss it with the people. What it is, they got a company that blanket files digital rights management claims, and they don't bother to check that the people may be, but it's a harassment thing to collect money. It's illegal. You, you hire lawyers, and lawyers benefit, but that's a form of censorship, is to make certain that only the music that you approve of is heard also. Mm -hmm. They do it with news, only the news. But we got mm -hmm. hit with a thing the other day from a major news organization to make certain that uh, a charity didn't get recognition because uh, somebody filed a DRM complaint on something that we had did about a charity. Do you own the rights to film? We didn't film anything. They were pitch still pictures with a crappy cell phone, folks and a voice over telling people what happened. Mm -hmm. You have to do the thing, you go take a picture. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and he said, well, you know, and then it just, it just buried. That's how they don't want something hurt, they bury simply. So I get, they, this is a never ending thing because um, when, actually we can finish it off with, historically it, is, it, historically it is completely accurate to say the more liberal the government you elect, the more likely it is you're going to have a, a very conservative um, informational system because they like to control everything. And a lot of it has to do with control yeah. or shall we say your freedom of speech. <laughs> you, you have very little with the, the liberal administration. So I guess until next time, which this is a never ending topic, once a month we talk about the trials and tribulations know, guess, of yeah. censorship. Yep. Well that's the state of the economy yeah. or the state of the industry here in the United States yeah. <laughs> today. So until our <laughs> Our next editorial on censorship. This is all okay. camera. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to www.nbnnewsvideoweb.com or www.montybubbles.net on the internet if they happen to be up at the moment. I know. Go Daddy got hacked. And I'm sure that has nothing to do with censorship. No. No, nothing. <clears throat> but it did happen when Snowden happened to leave Hong oh, Kong yeah. for Russia. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the NSA. Anyway, yep. thank you once again for hundreds and hundreds of millions of links on the internet. And come like us on Facebook, yes. Follow us on Twitter, yes. You can find us under Monty Bubbles or Monty Bubbles Network. And thank you once again. And then, actually, you can finish with one more paraphrase. But aren't you afraid of, of what they can do to you? I'm old. And so, so I'm going to quote you a thing from, uh, Audie, uh, from Charles Drake to Audie Murphy. And from the hell and back, he said simply, well, they can just kill us, they can't eat us. <laughs>